Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, yeah. uh, buongiorno. 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 It's hard. Um, it's a new. It's a new uh, age we're living. It's we keeping distance from each other, and um, and we. Um, try to do the best we can in the new conditions, but I'm delighted to be here today. Uh, a big hello to the ones that are connecting back at home uh, through live stream. Um, it's truly amazing to be here, so thank you for the invitation. It's, it's not my first time here. Um, I've been here in 2017. This is me, younger, more vibrant, looking better. <sighs> Yeah, I remember those days. This was four years ago, 2017. We were at uh, Teatro Parenti, and uh, we were meeting a bunch of us. And at that time, we were saying that we don't go online, we live online. Um, isn't that true? I mean, look at that. We were, we were presenting this new line, introducing this new concept, and that was almost um, uh, a line that reminded us what it was going to be the years after. And everything has changed since 2017 until today. So um, we've been experiencing a lot together as humankind, and I personally has, have changed a lot. I mean, to start with, I got married to a Mexican man, and uh, this is our daughter, uh, Maria. She's actually older now, but, and, and I'm brokenhearted to be here and not to be with her, but still, I'm delighted to be here, so thank you again for inviting me. So this is what happened in the last four years. I, I made this big decision and changed my big life, but other things happened to us, and this would not be a good session, this would not be a good seminar if we would not talk about what the pandemic and how much it hit all our lives. A lot has happened during the two years and something that we've been living under a global pandemic. Once in a century, this happens to humankind and for all of us. It allows us to look at our lives, rethink of who we are, look at our other human beings and reconsider the way we relate with each other. And this is a little bit what I'm gonna talk about today because this has direct implications on the way we express ourselves as human beings, but also the way brands connect to those human beings and consumers and how we are going to express ourselves going forward. Hopefully I'll be able to tell you as well how much YouTube makes part of it. YouTube was at the very center and we were observing all of these changes as they were happening across society. Um, so before I dive into that and dive into what we've learned uh, of what's happening in human, humankind, consumers, and all of us in the last few years, let's take a look at this video. The most human trait is to want to know why. And in a year that tested everyone around the world, why was searched more than ever. The spread of the coronavirus has passed a significant milestone. And while we didn't find all the answers, we kept asking. Some questions inspired joy. Others, excitement. Life in the bubble. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. I don't know what an improper fraction is. Keep all of those distractions out of the way. We found toilet tissue, y'all. Oh, my God. Put it on there and start it up for me. What are y'all doing? Yeah! It's still March. How many days in March? Some questions made us cry. You know, we've been through our ups and been through our downs. I think the most important part is that we all stay together throughout. I love you guys. Some made us worry about this spinning rock we call home. Fires were detected in the Amazon rainforest. Why were so many lives lost? Almost 1.5 million people have now died of COVID-19 worldwide. Why are we still asking the same questions? George Floyd. George Floyd repeatedly told the officers that he could not breathe. So why do we still have strength to continue? from thousands of protesters in cities around the world. Why are we not defeated? We have made too much progress, and we are not going back. We are going forward. Planes are starting to arrive in Beirut, full of international aid. Firefighters from around the world arriving in California. 
there are over 100 coronavirus vaccines in development worldwide. This is one of those times when people look out for one another and have each other's backs. We kept going for those who showed us the way. Think about how you would like the world to be for your daughters and granddaughters. Remember, the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. Press on with pride and press on with purpose. Why is it that this year showed its worst and we still found ways to triumph? An incredible feat for Maya Gabriera. Naomi Osaka, U.S. Open Championship. Can't let Corona stop you. Can't let quarantine stop you. So until we get to every answer, We're still searching. So who remembers those years uh, that, that just passed behind us and the impact that it had in our lives? And, and as all of this was happening, uh, YouTube was, was at the very center of it because for a lot of us who were reevaluating the space in our lives, the space between us, we were also connected to everyone through uh, 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 the internet. The internet was a lifeline for most of us to stay connected. And we found out during these two years that actually what makes us human is our inability, uh, our ability and willingness to be connected all the time. We crave for connection. And actually, the internet and technology allowed us to stay afloat, stay connected, feel each other, and be together. Um, just to give you a, a sense, daily live streams grew by 45%, more than half a million channels live streamed for the first time in 2020. It was just an incredible, incredible explosion of live stream uh, uh, connection. Uh, more people were connecting and learning things at home. More people were connected and learning things from each other. YouTube, in particular, in this country, in Italy, was a driving force to keep everyone afloat and everyone connected. Um, in Italy, 66% of Italian YouTubers viewers said that YouTube make them happy. And they say that YouTube is the number one platform in helping them um, dig deeper into their interests. So more than ever in Italy, this was um, incredibly present um, and important. As was doing an introspection during this time, I don't know about you, but I, we reevaluated our lives. We evaluated our relationship with each other. And we determined and we discovered new things about ourselves and about others. And we all talked about how is it going to be look, how is it going to look like when we go back to real life? What's going to happen after the pandemic? Am I going to go work on the same place? Am I going to have the same friends? How much time am I going to spend with my family? Some of us discovered that actually we want to spend more time with the family. Some others craved being with their friends outside. So all of this happened during these two years, and a lot of that came through the connections people made through YouTube. And we were observing all these patterns, and we learned a ton through these patterns. So with that in mind, um, um, I'd like to just share with you what we've learned through millions and millions of searches on our, on our search engine, as well as millions and millions of videos that we have observed uh, showing up uh, on YouTube during, this, um, during just two years. And there were three main trends that came out, which are going to pretty much shape how we are going to define our lives going forward. And I would, I would guess it will shape the way we're going to design marketing for brands going forward. And these, but before I say that, just, just so everybody knows, the way we watch has changed dramatically on YouTube. Uh, um, in Italy alone, we have about, during this period, 38.4 million unique visitors every month. So this is a very, very significant amount of people that are watching on YouTube. We have over 1 million subscribers, which was a growth of 40% year over year. And our watch time, 40% of the watch time of content that is produced in Italy is actually watched outside of Italy. So the creative ecosystem in Italy is vibrant and growing very, very much. And as we observe, as this thing was happening, not only in Italy, but across the world, we were paying attention to the trends, behaviors that were happening on our platform. And we detected three behaviors um, that were really shaping the world. The first one is authenticity. All of a sudden, it was OK to be me. All of a sudden, you know, you don't dress up to go to work. You don't have to pretend you're someone else. You actually are in your own natural environment, and you connect to others from home as you are. 
um, all of a sudden, you realize that actually there are very different, as, as most people become closer to who they are, you find out that other people are different from you. We remove ourselves from our armors and we show who we are really to each other. And we find out actually there's a diversity of people out, out in the world that need their voice. And when they come to a platform like YouTube, all the voices are treated the same. So this was the second one that we found out. And then finally, there was this urge, this need to do something about the world. Activism became clearly a third trend that emerged during this period. We were realizing as we were staying home that we wanted to get out and we wanted to make the world a better place once we came out. And so these three things are really emerging as critical trends. As we find out more about ourselves, we find out that it's okay to be authentic and to show my true self. It's okay to understand that other people are different than me, and that is a good thing. And finally, it's okay to have a role and a place in the world to change it. Um, and so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on each one of these trends and how they manifested themselves. Authenticity is obviously a big, big one. It has been really an expression that has been overused overall uh, quite significantly, but it has been expressed very significantly through the platform. And some brands, like this one, have done it really, really well. So all of a sudden, we're redefining uh, beauty, and courage all of a sudden is beauty, and this is a face of authenticity as clear as it comes. Um, but things, uh, authenticity can be expressed in several different ways. Another one can, it's, it doesn't have to be as serious as this one. There's other options like this one. Let's take a look. Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on yes, in I the video settings. Remove it. I've got my assistant here, she's trying to, but. I'm here live, it's not, I'm not a cat. <laughs> so all of a sudden, what you have here is someone who is vulnerable enough and okay to come to a meeting and have a meeting with other people and they have a screen of a cat. Um, I don't know about you, but I spent a lot of time on meetings during this period and the connection that we had with other people were a lot more vulnerable. Uh, I met with very, very, very senior clients of mine um, but we were all bare feet at home and, and connecting from kitchens. I could listen to their dogs barking and they could listen to the Amazon guy delivering doors. I had to interrupt to go and get the Amazon uh, package that was being delivered at that time. All of this was happening and all of this was okay. And you could see that. You could see that authenticity is now okay. We could see that brands embraced it really, really well, and Diesel did this very, very well. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to run this advertising, but I guess most of you know it, um, uh, the, Francesca, um, the Francesca execution for Diesel, which was just another way of demonstrating this um, authenticity. So authenticity is clearly on the rise, as is activism. People want to do something about the world that we've seen. We've seen the Nike example was one of the best ones. Um, that we've ever seen. People want to stand for causes, they want to take action, they want to donate money. Black Lives Matter really changed the dialogue on race, not only in the US, but around the world. And we do now know that 68% of Americans say that a company's social responsibility uh, reputation in, in influences their purchase decisions. And 63% of Italians in this country, viewers on YouTube, said that YouTube reflects the latest social, cultural, and ethical movement. So people come to YouTube to actually see how, how the world society is changing and how they can act. Um, I was recently, just uh, early last week, at COP26. I was fortunate enough to be at the New York Times um, stage over there introducing Seat at the Table. And Seat at the Table is part of a series we have developed at YouTube programs um, about uh, YouTubers, this one is Jack Harris. He has 3.7 million uh, followers, and he developed an incredible series about how young voices have to have a seat at the table in order to change the world 
and, uh, and, and address climate change. This was an incredible uh, opportunity, um, and it was clearly, for me, a unique opportunity to see how the young voices want to be on the stage. COP26 was an interesting, it was an interesting event where you have a lot of old people saying that we need to give voice to the young people, and yet you didn't see a lot of young people present, but through YouTube, most of them, we managed to put them on stage and actually deliver the messages that everyone has to do something about climate change. And we are so serious about how we want to help the young voices do something about uh, climate change that we developed this campaign. Wow, that is gorgeous. <sighs> Too bad it's f***ed. Look at these birds. <laughs> so in love and totally f These sharks. This waterfall, this, I, I don't even know what that is, but it's definitely You know, at least the glaciers are still standing. Oh, come on. It's kind of a bummer too, you know? Because this place is quite amazing. But hey, you know, what can you really do, right? Now you're gone. YouTube presents Un It, five original shows YouTube developed to inspire social change and raise money for nonprofits dedicated to doing the same. Un It, streaming now, only on YouTube. And as and I have the T-shirt of Un It, so if you want to grab one. So, and. A lot, of, a lot of people did not like the campaign, and that's, a good, that's good news. That means that we are rocking somehow uh, a lot of established truths, and we are uh, calling for action. And speaking again for on activism, we spend a lot of time uh, contributing to uh, helping the LGBT community to stay afloat and stay alive during a period that was incredibly difficult. Um, if there's one thing the LGBT community needs is to stick together, socially interact in order to, you know, find comfort in numbers. And of course, during the pandemic was incredibly hard. So again, once again, we came forward and we uh, provided support remotely and we produced as well this incredible um, uh, series. There are no labels that define you. No pronouns that can bind you. No rainbow big enough to capture you. No heels high enough to trip you. Because you are not one thing or another. Not just an L, G, B, T, or Q. You are everything. And this Pride party is for you. YouTube Pride 2021. Seven hosts, five hours of Pride, one global party. Featuring Oli Alexander with Moan Wiswan, Elton John and David Furnish, Demi Lovato, Trixie Mattel, Daniel Howell, and an amazing lineup of YouTube creators, all in support of the LGBTQ plus community. June 25th, only on YouTube. Yeah. And what was incredible during this period of activism is that we have to thank Viktor Orban, uh, president of Hungary, for doing the best uh, effort for, uh, for the LGBT community as he was enacting a law that, um, that is oppressing the LGBT community in Hungary, brands came immediately during, this was during the Euro, um, came immediately to provide support to LGBT community. So brands understood that they have to uh, be conduits of the activism that the young generation is asking for. So as the events were happening, brands r rose to the occasion and, um, and stood for the rights of LGBT uh, community. And speaking of that, speaking of diverse voices, we've also, um, as I've mentioned before, understood that the world comes in different ways, shapes, and forms, and we need to give a voice to uh, all of that world. We spent a lot of time uh, dedicating our efforts behind Black Voices, and YouTube Black Voices effort was a tremendous, tremendous uh, initiative that we launched during the pandemic. Uh, a global fund of $100 million to provide support in production of um, and, and giving Black Voices the ability to show themselves, show their creativity, celebrate its culture, and um, and we are already on year two, and things are going really, really well in this front. We have commissioned a ton of original content with black creators as well across the world, um, and, um, and is going tremendously, tremendously well. 
Um, we also, uh, of course, work with female creators, and we're developing a bunch of initiatives around it, including in Italy, where we have a, a, uh, a contest of five uh, female creators, Loretta, Schemia, Shanti, Tech Princess, um, who share their personal stories and support female creators and support each other as they're, they're also um, developing their voice within YouTube. Questo video sarà un po' diverso dal solito, non ho un prodotto da mostrarvi o un servizio da spiegarvi. Questa volta YouTube mi ha invitata a condividere la mia esperienza di creator donna sulla piattaforma e io non mi sono di certo tirata indietro. So, as we provide support across, across the board as a platform, and we are in fact just reflecting where the culture is going, we are proving again that the young voices want to find an expression of authenticity, they want to see more diverse voices represented on the platform, and they want to do something and act uh, on the world. Um, and this is just purely not only what we found out, but actually what the new generation is, tr is telling us. The, the generation that is using YouTube is a bunch of progressive voices. 77% of millennial women believe YouTube is a place that inspires others to fight social change, and 74% say YouTube enables new ideas and trends to grow and get wider attention. So this is what they expect and find and develop within our platform. Um, the brands need to listen to this. Because the consumers are saying that 70% uh, say a brand value is matching their personal values is a deciding factor when buying. People are saying 30% strong, have stronger growth for businesses that leverage brand purpose strategically, and 65% of consumers say that how brands behave now will have a huge impact on how they will buy in the future. If the brands are not listening, consumers will leave them. And this is the key message that we want to say. This is what we see in our platform, and this is going to be critical for brands to connect to. Um, this is what's called purpose. It has been discussed over and over again. And we've seen it on Can Lion how 70% of brand leaders and 60% of agencies will be focusing on brand purpose led content and storytelling in the future. So this is here to stay, and brand plans uh, will have to reflect precisely that, as well as the voice we provide to uh, our messages. And by the way, this would not be a summit on creativity if I would not speak about Gen Z. <clears throat> Gen Z is the first and the last generation we should be focusing on, the first one to be defined globally because they are influenced by online events. They are the first generation that was born already online. Five year, four, four years ago when I was here, we were still wondering about from you know, going online to living online. Gen Z never knew any other reality. So therefore, they do behave like one single group around the world. However, they're not a cohort because they all come with different voices. They come with different, a different tapestry. And it's a tapestry that we have to acknowledge and we have to answer to. So it's the last one to define just simply with broad strokes. But at the same time, it's the first one that is being impacted globally. Um, through, uh, through having lived and breathed and understood the world through their presence online. And actually, 67% of the Gen Zs think that being true to their values and beliefs makes a person cool. That is new. That never happened before. Um, and, and, and that's why there was such a huge voice on COP26 when I was there. 68% um, of Gen Zs think it's more important to see others being real when they're online. Again, authenticity. And 72% of Gen Zs agree YouTube is, is where they can hear different viewpoints and discuss important issues. So this is what they're telling us that we need to do. So no wonder YouTube is such an appropriate platform for this generation to connect through. Uh, it's where our culture, our voice, and music grows. Music is one of the several ways they express themselves. And we've seen that how this generation starts with authenticity in order to grow. You know, we've all seen Justin Bieber on YouTube where he started. We've seen Justin Bieber authentic as itself, not curated, not designed, not manicured, uh, show his talent first before he achieved stardom with 6.1 million views per day just on our platform. We've seen how all of a sudden Korea is taking over, surprisingly, globally, through Gen Z. It's taking over our culture. 
This is Blackpink, but I could talk about BTS, I will, in fact, and other, we could talk about uh, Squid Game, and we can talk about how Korea, Korean pop, people, the majority of people around the world don't, don't speak Korean, and yet, K-pop is taking over the world and shaping Gen Z's view of the world. So it's actually extraordinary. And we've seen this move from authentic underground to stardom happening over and over again. In this country, Maneskin did that really, really well, and it's now a driving force globally for pop music. But they started on the streets, as everybody knows. And they, after winning the Eurovision, they were propelled for stardom immediately. We've seen that with, um, uh, with Ed Sheeran. Uh, again, he was on the streets. Apparently, everyone has to be on the streets to be famous, so remind me to be on the street. Um, he started on the street. Here he is playing his, some of the first musics, again, captured on YouTube, and the next thing you know, he's one of the biggest stars in the world. And Lior, later on, my colleague, will come and speak about what that means. And Gen Zers are also telling us all of that, and they're using new formats to communicate. And one of them is short uh, short format videos. And the reason why I want to bring this to your attention is because this is the new canvas of creativity and communication. This is how this generation will speak going forward, so much so that some of the biggest stars connected with YouTube are using that format. Yeah, and we have BTS. Our um, shorts player um, it has already 6.5 billion daily views. 6.5 billion daily views on shorts. This is clearly the new canvas of expression for the new generation, and I think people at, in this room and back at home should really be paying attention to what that means. Um, right, so wrapping up. What have we learned through this last year's? And what have you learned through what we've seen evolving in the last platform, in our platform in the last two years? Authenticity is on the rise. It's all about being who you are, being comfortable with who you are. Diversity is on the rise. Please acknowledge that people come in different shapes and forms, different voices need to be on the platform. It's absolutely critical. They need to be on your brands. Your brands need to talk to them. Your creativity needs to speak different voices, different themes, different songs, different colors. And finally, activism. People want to do something. They want to, have to see a purpose on what they do. And brands need to speak the language of purpose. And, um, and, 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 and YouTube and other platforms is the way to connect to this new generation, and there's new formats um, to do it. As a company, we are learning a ton on how to do this properly, and we are sharing it with the world. If you want to learn more about how we are becoming, as a, as a company and as a platform, a better contributor to this new world of authenticity, activism, and inclusivity, please go to allinwithgoogle.com. It has a bunch of tools, really, really tremendous, um, tremendous uh, source of inspiration. Um, and please, you know, we are sharing the learnings with the world. If you find something that is different, please share with us as we are building this um, learning together. And all of this brings us to the reason why we believe YouTube is being so successful is because we are actually matching exactly what is expected from everyone around the world during this time. This is our mission, and this is how we design the platform. YouTube is and wants to give everyone a voice and show them the world, so no wonder our, when you go to YouTube, you see authentic voices, voices that want to change the world, and very diverse voices from around the world. So let's take a look at um, our Anthem video, and thank you very much for having me here today. So, you want it to sound like this, right? Really good? Look at these moments, all of these stories, secrets revelations from every corner of the world. 
Every video a chance to walk in someone else's shoes. A reminder of how amazingly generous people are. How hilariously funny and how heartbreakingly vulnerable humans can be. Thank you guys so much for being here for me. This is the rawest, purest, most unfiltered portrait of who we are as people. A celebration of what humans can do. Proof of our potential, a motor for our progress. We only get one chance at life and you're always gonna be happy if you're gonna be real with yourself. This is what happens when you give everyone a voice, a chance to be heard and a stage to be seen. Julius Yego, they call it the YouTube man. Whatever your thing is, well, here it can become the next big thing. That person who thought they were no one, they can become someone. That voice that thought it didn't matter, well, it can start a movement. Even when you feel all alone in the world, it's here you can find someone just like you. Days like this is why I started, because otherwise I would just be doing this alone. This is what family's about right here. That's the power of YouTube. That's the power of you. All of you. So remember, authenticity, activism, diversity. Thank you so much.